youthful Addis after his murder was miraculously brought to life again three days after his demise. The celebration of the cycle of death and renewal was one of the major festivals of the Metriac cult. Addis, therefore, represented a promise of reborn life. And as such, it is not surprising that we find representations of the so-called mourning Addis as a common tomb motif in the ancient world. The parallel, albeit at a superficial level, between this myth and the account of the resurrection of Christ is clear. Moreover, Addis, as a shepherd, occupies a favorite Christian image of Christ as a good shepherd. Further parallels also seem to have existed. The pine tree of Addis, for example, is parallel to the Christ, the cross of Christ beyond Addis himself. Cybele too offered a challenge to Christian divine nomenclature. Cybele was regarded as a virgin goddess and as such could be seen as a rival to the Virgin Mary. Cybele as the mother of God's mater diem here again present a starkly pagan parallel to the Christian mother of God. There was rivalry too in ritual. The climax of the celebration of Addis' resurrection, the Hilaria, fell on the 25th of March, the date that the early church had settled on as the day of Christ's death. As we can see, according to the scholar, Addis is killed, fixed to a tree, resurrects after three days, while his mother is regarded as a virgin goddess comparable to the Virgin Mary. These conclusions come from the writings of ancient pagans as well as early church fathers, including Justice Martyr, Justin Martyr, Clement of Alexandria, Hippo, uh, Hippolytus, Tatian, Tertullian, Tertullian, Augustine, Ornobius, Firmicus, Maternus. So Addis was a, a born of a virgin birth. A god, Agdistus, had his dick cut off, which became the seed of an almond tree that grew and gave fruits with in which Nana picks and gets impregnated by them. Then comes Nana, give birth to Addis. If Nana was a virgin, then we could say it's a kind of a virgin birth, but unlike that of Christ Jesus, since Jesus is said to be out of the seed of a woman, Genesis 3.15, namely without a biological father, was Nana a virgin? I'm still searching for a historical record that will affirm, wow, religion so stupid. Addis was a Phygrian vegetation god, the consort of the great mother Kibeli. He was forced by the goddess to castrate himself in a mad frenzy as punishment for his infidelity. Initiates into the eunuch priesthood of Kibeli, called the Galli, reenacted the myth with their self-castration. <laughs> Religion. This is so silly. Isn't this silly? Okay, so Krishna was born of a virgin. Krishna performed miracles, had disciples. Krishna was resurrected. Greek god Dionysus, born of a virgin. Conspicuously, on December 25th, Dionysus was the king of kings. God's only begotten son, the Alpha and the Omega. Dionysus resurrected the Greek god of wine. Dionysus, Bacchus, also called Eochus, was depicted as having been born of a virgin mother on December 25th, performing miracles such as changing water into wine, appearing surrounded by or one of twelve figures bearing epithets such as the only begotten son and the savior, dying resurrected after three days, ascending into heaven. As with Jesus, December 25th and January 6th are both traditional birth dates in the Dionysian myth and simply represent the period of the winter solstice. Indeed, the winter solstice date of the Greek sun and wine uh, god Dionysus was originally recognized in early January, but was eventually placed on December 25th, as related by ancient Latin writer Macrobius. Regardless, the effect is the same. The winter sun god is born around this time when the shortest day of the year begins to become longer. According to the most common tradition, Dionysus was the son of the god Zeus and the mortal woman Smelly in the Cretan version. So Dionysus was, uh, you know, born on December 25th. His uh, death and resurrection were so famous in ancient times, so much that the Christian father Origen felt the need to address them in his own contra celsus, comparing them unfavorably, of course, to those of Christ. By Origen's time, these Dionysian mysteries had already been celebrated for centuries. Dionysus, Bacchus's resurrection and revival, after having been torn to pieces or otherwise killed, earned him the epithet of twice-born Krishna, was born of a chaste virgin called Devaki, who on the account of her purity was selected to become the mother of God. Krishna of India, Osor, Oset, and Heru of ancient Kemet, Egypt, India, has a number of messengers who were divinely conceived, and two of them bore the name Krishna, Krishna the Savior. Note the similarity with Christ. Now Krishna was born of a chaste virgin called Devaki, 
who on account of her purity was selected to become the mother of God. Buddha was considered and believed by his followers to have been begotten of God, born of a virgin whose name was Maya. Long before the Christian era, we read how the divine power called the Holy Ghost descended upon Virgin Maya. In ancient Chinese version of the story, the Holy Ghost is called Xing Xin. The Siamese, Taiwan, had a God and Savior who was a virgin born, whom they called Condom. Kodom. Kodom. In this very ancient story, the beautiful virgin had been informed in advance that she was to become the mother of a great messenger of God. And one day, while in her usual period of meditation and prayer, she was meditated or impregnated by divine sunbeams. When the boy was born, he grew up in a remarkable manner, became a protege of wisdom, and performed miracles. When the first Jesuit priest visited China, they wrote in the reports that finding a heathen religion of that country of a story of a redeeming savior is born of a virgin divinely conceived. The God was said to have been born 3468 BC. His name was Lyo Tze, T-S-Z-E, and was said to have been born of a virgin black in complexion and as beautiful as a jasper. Virgin births, you had Buddha, you had Krishna, the Siamese, Taiwan had a god savior, um, Kodom, there's a first Jesuit priest went to China, there's a god, Lao Tze, L A O, so Leo T S Z E, Tze, that was said to have been born in 3468 BC, so 3000 years before Christ, right? In Egypt, long before the Christian era, before any of its doctrines was conceived, the Egyptian people had several messengers of God who were conceived through immaculate conception. Horus was known to all of ancient Egypt to have been born of the Virgin Isis, and his conception and birth was considered one of the three great mysteries or mystery, mystical doctrines of the Egyptian religion. Then every incident in connection with the conception and birth of Horus was pictured, sculptured, adorned, and worshipped as the incidents of the conception and birth of Jesus is among the Christians today. Another Egyptian god called Ra was also conceived by a virgin. So the sun god Ra conceived by a virgin. I mean, I could go on. The examples seem like they'd be just way too many. Um, Plato was born in Athens in 429 BC and was believed by the populace to be a, the divine son of a pure virgin called Perictione. Perictione. So Plato was even supposedly born by a uh, virgin. It's recorded in ancient record that the father of Plato was known as Eris, had been admonished in a spiritual dream to hold pure and sacred the person of his wife until after the divine conception and birth of the child. That is to come, and that's this child be conceived by divine means. The Perso Roman god Mithra had 12 disciples. Mithra was called the truth, the light. Mithra was dead for three days, and then Mithra was uh, resurrected. Babylonians worshipped the tree. December 25th was the birthday of Sol Invictus, uh, the unconquerable son who Marcus Aurelius worshipped, Persian Mithras. Christmas in America was illegal until 1840. In the 3rd and 4th centuries AD, the cult of Mithra, carried and supported by the soldiers of the Roman Empire, was the chief rival in the newly developing religion of Christianity. The Roman emperors Commodus and Julian were initiates of the Mithraism, and in 307, Diocletian uh, consecrated a temple on the Danube River to Mithra, protector of the empire. According to the myth, Mithra was born bearing a torch and armed with a knife beside a sacred stream under a sacred tree, a child of the earth itself. He soon rode and later killed the life-given cosmic bull whose blood fertilizes all vegetation. Mithra's slaying of the bull was a popular subject of Hellenic art and became the prototype for a bull-slaying ritual of fertility in the Mith Mithraic cult. As a god of light, Mithra is associated with the Greek sun god Helios and the Roman Sol Invictus. He is also paired with Anahita, goddess of the fertilizing waters. Mithra was a great traveling teacher. Mithra had 12 disciples. He could perform miracles. Mithra was called the Good Shepherd, the Way, the Truth, and the Light, Redeemer, Redeemer Savior, Messiah, the Lion, the Lamb. Mithras was a source of life, could redeem the souls of the dead into the better world. Ceremonies included a sort of baptism to remove sins, anointing, a sacred meal of bread and water, while a consecrated wine... Uh, believed to possess wonderful power played a prominent part 
most people are born on tw December 25th, so perhaps it's just luck. Springtime is when the fucking happens, and then December 25th is when the child is born nine months later, so Jesus could be every baby. I wasn't born on December 25th, so to have so many birthdays on December 25th, you have Apollo, Addis, Bacchus, Dionysus, Helios, Horus, Jupiter, Krishna, Mithras, Nimrod, uh, Perseus, Tammuz, Sol Invictus, Buddha, Hercules, Amun Ra, Amun Ra, Zeus, Quetzalcoatl, Prometheus, Hermes, Heracles, and Bedal. Twenty-two different gods have been born on December 25th. Twenty-two. I mean, that's, you know, not everybody's born on December 25th. Not every god is born ever, right? There's not that many gods out there. Um, but all of them seem to be born on the uh, winter solstice, you know, just just out of chance, out of, you know, out of... So, Quetzalcoatl. This is an interesting one because this is a god of the Western Hemisphere. This is an Aztec god. He was born of a virgin around 900 B.C. He was sojourned in the wilderness, fasted for 40 days, and was crucified. So that's Quetzalcoatl. Okay, that's the Aztec god. Uh, Hercules, son of the god Zeus, born around 500 BC, predestined by birth to inherit the throne of Argos. Hera, the jealous wife of Zeus, desired a throne for another and sought to delay the birth of Hercules, and subsequently tried to kill Hercules while in his crib by sending two snakes to strangle him. Hercules killed the snakes, though he was less than a year old. Later, he was sent away to the countryside where he became a shepherd. Addis of uh, Phagria. Fa Phagria. Figria, P H R Y G I A. So, your Phrygia, Phrygia, the Phrygia, born in 1200 BC. His mother was a virgin. This is Addis. His mother was born a virgin. Name was Nana. He is a shepherd. Reported died by self emasculation under a pine tree. He was alleged to have risen from the dead at Easter, the vernal equinox. Right, springtime. The spring is the the vernal equinox. Is the spring equinox. Uh, Tammuz was born before 1200 BC, was held as the only begotten son of the god E, just E A, Ea, E. His mother was a virgin by the name of Ishtar. As an infant, he was hidden in a chest by Aphrodite, the goddess of love, and entrusted to Persephone. Persephone, the goddess of the netherworld, Persephone later opened the chest and was so stricken by the beauty of Tammuz that she refused to return the child to Aphrodite. The two goddesses fought each other for possession of the child till finally the god Zeus meditated on the matter and declared that the child shall spend half its year with Aphrodite and the other half in the netherworld with Persephone. A full-grown evergreen tree claimed the untimely death of her son, Husband Nimrod, a full-grown evergreen tree, sprang up overnight from the dead tree stump. Uh, Simi uh, Ramus claimed that Nimrod would visit the evergreen tree and leave gifts each year on the anniversary of his birth, which just happened to be on December 25th. This is the true origin of the Christmas tree. So there's Tammuz, there's Nimrod. Um, they said that Nimrod would visit by an evergreen tree and leave gifts each year on the anniversary of his birth. So Nimrod was Santa Claus, right? Or was Father Time, or Father Saturn, or, you know, um, who, uh, Dionysus, or uh, Hercules. So, other 25th, uh, December 25th birthdays, you got Cab Calloway, Jimmy Buffett, Humphrey Bogart, Clara Barton, Dido, Anwar Sadat, and Carl Rove. So, all those actually have, you know, greater foundations for celebration since they're actually real, right? There's actually we actually see these people. And I'll say to get Cab Calloway, right, the dancing the dancing man, Jimmy Buffett, the cheeseburgers in paradise. Humphrey Bogart, that's uh frankly my dear don't give a damn. Clara Barton, a humanitarian, Dido saying uh, that uh, my tea's gone called I'm wondering why uh with a uh, M and M's hook uh, stand. Anwar Sadat was one of the last Egyptian presidents. I think he was good, but he was assa assassinated. And then you got uh, uh, Mubarak, who was in there for the last 30 years. Karl Rove, clearly the devil. So other gods that were born on December 25th. You have Krishna of India, born December 25th, 3228 B.C. 
His mother was a virgin. Mother's name was Maia. The name Krishna means black or dark. His uncle Kamsa, the ruler at the time of his birth, sought to kill Krishna because he had heard a prophecy that Krishna would overthrow him. Just like King Herod and Jesus, Krishna escaped death by being smuggled out of the area to safety. Um, Krishna's story and Jesus' story fit together like a hand in a glove. Mithra of Persia, born on December 25th before 1500. 